What is holistic language learning? Perhaps when you hear the word holistic, you think of alternative medicine, herbal tea, and practicing yoga to find your chi. I'm sure there are language learners out there who talk about languages alongside that kind of stuff, but that's not what I mean by holistic language learning. Hi, my name's Lamont, and for about a year now, I've been trying to improve my life through a series of positive changes. Nothing revolutionary, just the basics, like goal setting and more productive routines. The sorts of stuff that lots of other people talk about and make videos about regularly. People with a lot more knowledge and experience than I have, and it's from these people that I first got the ideas. The problem is that while all this stuff is great, and I can definitely say that it's had a huge impact on my life, I started to take it so seriously that I began to forget about or not have time for my passion and the area that I was starting to develop a reputation for talking about. I love languages. I love them so much. I love the easy bits. I love the hard bits. I love etymology. The fact that the Swedish word for honeymoon is literally cuddle month. It's, it gives me goosebumps, which by the way is another weird word, goosebumps. Anyway, I love languages so much that learning them is non-negotiable. The problem is that learning a language well, so well that people will listen to you about how to learn a language themselves, which is what I'm trying to achieve, this demands both time and energy. In my own videos, I've recommended that beginners should put in between one and three hours a day, every day, and that at least some of that should be what we often call deep work, with reference to Cal Newport's book on the topic. That is, phone off, social media closed, just you and the language. And the problem with that is that any kind of conventional wisdom would say that someone like me, that is, someone with a job, two YouTube channels, and trying to raise two kids, should not be spending an hour or two of my most valuable, switched on time every day trying to learn languages. So this got me thinking, could I look at self-development principles through the lens of language learning, applying those principles to my languages and language learning, and then applying what I'd learnt through the study of languages to the rest of life. After almost six months of consideration, I've come to the very firm belief that the answer is yes. And the concept I've come up with is what I call holistic language learning. As I get older, I try to see everything in the largest possible context in order to find answers to the biggest questions. Holistic language learning is all about taking your context into account. It is based on the belief that to really, truly learn a language well, you have to make the language an integral part of your life. But it also acknowledges that this can be extremely difficult to do if you do not live in a country where that language is commonly spoken. That is, you have to live your life in your native language. You have to talk to your family and friends. You have to do your job. You have to order food. All these things in your native language. Holistic learning is an approach in which every way that it's possible for you to aid your own learning is implemented in order that you learn your language better. And that by learning your language better, you can in fact learn to live better. It's what the French would call a virtuous cycle. In a recent video of Matt Diavella's, he spoke to author and public speaker Stephen Kotler, who has significantly researched and written about the state commonly known as flow or being in the zone. In this video, he breaks down the triggers of flow to these five things. Novelty, pattern recognition, complexity, unpredictability, and risk. And on hearing this, I thought, no wonder some people, myself included, love learning languages so much. It's a cocktail of those five qualities and very little else. Novelty. Obviously, speaking and hearing a language that isn't your own is at least somewhat novel, even if you do understand it. But you also recognize patterns. Whether the language resembles your mother tongue or not, there comes a time whereby the way you understand and learn more of the language is by pattern recognition. Complexity. Even simple languages are complex in their own way. 
Unpredictability. Sometimes you'll come across the most bizarre exceptions and idioms in a language that you thought you understood. And risk. Especially in the early stages of language learning, it feels genuinely nerve-wracking to start talking to native speakers. So this fascinated me, and it helped me to cement an idea that I'd already had floating around of how I could use what I'm already obsessed with, being languages, to push me to develop in other areas of my life and to see if by improving other aspects of my life, I could also be a better language learner. So this year, I aim to undertake 10 experiments. Now, some of these might be the sorts of things you've seen all over the internet before. I'll be waking up really early, I'll be meditating, I'll be running and engaging in other forms of exercise, and at least a few more of the sorts of things we've come to expect. But there'll also be some pretty different ones that you may not have seen before. I'll also be reading some carefully chosen books and chatting to some people to see what wisdom others can bring to this experiment. And instead of just talking about how these things are affecting my life, I'll be analyzing and sharing with you how these things affect our ability to learn languages from both a lifestyle angle and a psychological angle. And as I do that, I'll also be seeking the most valuable lessons that learning languages in this way has to teach us about our lives. So while I find out what habits can improve my learning of languages and how, I'll also be exploring how language learning can improve my habits. So whether or not you're learning a language, I'd ask that you come with me on this journey and find out what your life might look like if you could just do a few things a little bit differently. Because I won't just be sharing my language learning journey with you. I'll be sharing my journey, my efforts to stay focused while also maintaining a YouTube channel, which is super distracting, my efforts to get in physical shape while also learning French and eating croissants. It's gonna be pretty rough. It'll be fun, I think, for you at least, but I think it'll be enlightening for both of us. So join in and I'll see you soon.